Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. And happy Wednesday, guys. We are still on our Love is Blind season five grind in our era of LIB <laughs> because we are continuing our recap of the current season. We'll be recapping episodes eight and nine today. What a crazy set of episodes. <sighs> um, there's a lot to talk about, but before it's we so get into much. that... By the time you guys listen to this episode, I will be in Singapore. Um, That's so exciting. I loved Singapore. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'll be in Asia with my family. So we're doing Singapore, then Vietnam, Japan, and South Korea for two and a half weeks. Um, It's just not best timing. I just don't know how I'm going to record this podcast um, while I'm out there because we are going week by week. But, you know, we're going to make it work. Um, yeah, so we have technology, baby. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who watch our videos, you'll just see me with Asia in the background. <laughs> Asia in the back. All of Asia. <laughs> yeah. Just the landscape of Asia. Yeah. No, that's um, gonna, that sounds like such a fun trip, though. I'm so excited for you. That's awesome. I've always yeah, wanted I'm to really go to excited. Japan. Oh, I'm really excited. We yeah. were going to go together. Remember, we we're talking yes. about it for a little bit to like meet out there. But, you yeah. know, next time, maybe we'll next do a trip time. and like record our podcast out in. <laughs> and I don't know, like we could go to Bali, Hong Kong, Bali. Hong Kong. Oh, that'd be so cool. Just do like a month in okay. Bali. I think we got to yeah. do it. Oh. I think we do, too. Oh my Let's gosh, that'd be it. so much fun. Yeah. Um, but in terms of life updates, I mean, I have so many relationship updates I want to share with you guys, but I'm going to save it until we're done with this current season because, <laughs> oh my gosh, like this is my world right now. Love is blind. Yeah, it's Anything taking over our you, lives. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh, just lifing. I'm just so excited that it's finally crisp fall air weather. Like <laughs> I'm in cozy sweater like all me and the girls are all like all talking about just like doing cute little fall things and I don't know I just love it because it just helps me you know set my mind to the next like season of life <laughs> yeah like, you know so I'm excited about it but no what do you honestly, mean the next season of life like what I don't know what's the next season, season? I just mean like when seasons change it makes me like fall back into myself a little bit and like mm-hmm you know, stop being so much on the go and like, think about, okay, what is it that I want to do in the next upcoming year? Like, what are my goals? Like, I really like to like sit down and think about that shit. I don't know. You I do. Become wholesome. Yeah. You're very yeah. like a wholesome goal oriented <laughs> woman these days. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm like, all I want to do is lay on the couch, eat some That's snacks on the go right now you're like i was like just got out of traveling i can't look like what i'm gonna be doing in two months i go day by day i was like what do i need to freaking do today but what we are doing today though is talking about love is blind yes we are (laughs) So last episode, we talked about how obviously there's couples that have gotten engaged that aren't followed. And so there's three couples that they did not follow, Paige and Josh, Enoch and Erica, and Estefania and Jared. These are some very cool names, by the way. I'm into them. They're very pretty. Uh, Yeah. They're so pretty. Um, So those are the three couples that they did not follow that got engaged. But obviously we see... Uh, Reality Ashley actually posted about it. Um, And so that was very enlightening. And then also Renee and Carter, we see in episodes eight and nine, we see more of them. And I'm like, it's so obvious that they were followed, but cut later. I'm just like, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. The way they edited them. I'm still very curious in terms of why they cut them out completely from the show, considering there's a marriage license filed. So they clearly make it to the altar. And obviously yeah. they're in the scenes. It was so funny when they edited um, Lydia to say that she brought Renee as Renee. a friend to the to the bridal dress um, yes. fitting. That was because so... Um, it, it was very clear Renee came as a bride-to-be. Like she was well, wearing white. Mom- and her mom is sitting next to her and you can clearly say they look very similar. Yeah. So I was like, wait, what? And also, if you brought her as a friend, wouldn't she be placed sitting closer to you? Yeah. She was like on the opposite end of the couch. I so know. I was like, very blatantly, uh, they really effed that up. But 
anyways i really would love to know why there's a lot of rumblings going around online like on reddit and tiktok about the reasons but obviously we don't know but yeah um but apart from those four couples there was also one other couple that apparently got followed did you hear about yeah. this nat I did. I saw it on people.com. There was actually a fifth couple. Their names were Tran Dang and Thomas Smith. Hopefully I'm pronouncing those correctly. They were part of the cast for season five, but they weren't featured in the episodes and they also weren't part of the cast release that happened before the show. But uh, Tran Dang is suing the production company, Kinetic Content, um, after claiming she was sexually assaulted on set by her former fiance, Thomas Smith, and alleging that Kinetic did nothing to stop it, according to her complaint, which was obtained by people. Um, and according to the article in the suit, Dang also claimed she was falsely imprisoned while filming and producers acted with negligence. Um, I just want to read other snippets from the article too, to just provide more context in terms of what happened, but you can easily Google this if you want to read the entire thing. I highly encourage you to. Um, so in the article, it says that during her time in the pods, Dane got engaged to fellow participant Thomas Smith. According to the lawsuit, the two flew to Mexico where Dane alleges she was sexually assaulted by Smith on May 3rd, 2022, while filming was going on. In response to the allegation, Smith's attorney, Kip Patterson, tells people that they do not comment on ongoing litigation. In the article, it says that the complaint reads, quote, Smith and without Miss Dane's consent, forcibly groped her, exposed himself in the nude and repeatedly made sexual contact over her express objection end quote, noting that, quote, because of kinetic content and delirium TV's 24 hour surveillance of cast members, most, if not all of these traumatic events were likely captured on film, end quote. The article continues to say that the complaint notes that Dang is, quote, not a very assertive person, end quote, and, quote, was baffled that no one had intervened to stop the harassment, end quote. She allegedly reported the incident, but according to the suit, had an assistant producer who, quote, gaslighted her, implying that she was at fault for what had happened with Thomas Smith by not communicating effectively or somehow not taking the relationship seriously, end quote. Chris Colin, the creator of Love is Blind, responded to this complaint and the allegations in this article. So this is what he said, quote, claiming that you are falsely imprisoned on Love is Blind is preposterous and ridiculous. You come and go as you choose. You are not required to stay. If you stay, that is your decision, end quote. He continues, quote, the participants are not under our control. They are living their lives. We come in, we film them for a period of time, we leave. They can leave as many, many, many people have before anytime they want, end quote. He also said, quote, we have round the clock psychologists, a highly trained production team. We have a whole battalion of people whose job it is to make sure that we prioritize our participants' well-being. But the participant has to be actively involved in that process, end quote. Wow, dude, that is a lot to unpack. Yeah. Um, wow. When I first read this article, I actually cried. Like my heart really broke for her. Yeah. Um, we don't know anything about this situation. So we don't know what's really going on. We are really just going off of this article. But I feel like very compelled to like speak out against kinetic mm -hmm. content and also Netflix, just based on this article, based on my experience, what I've heard from other cast members, again, not on this particularly, but just in terms of the entire filming process. I just don't like that there are clear lies being told um, in this article on Chris Colin's part. I'm not sure if he's just unaware of the transgressions that occur on the Love is Blind production sets. Yeah, I think the, the, so listen, again, like you mentioned, we have no idea what the situation is that transpired. For me, I think the way that the article is worded and how Chris is talking about the situation, it feels like he's not taking accountability for the production team. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. How do we make sure it never happens again? It's more being like, oh, like we have like we would never allow this to happen on set and there's like if she said something we would have done something it's like they're becoming defensive instead of like explaining how they're going to change the set and its protocol and like helping 
individuals, if ever this has ha like happens in the future, what are they going to do about it? How are they going to protect caste? Like instead of going into that and talking about it, they're more being like, oh, if we knew we would have done something. Well, like that's not the point. Like it happened. What are you going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again? I never felt that like my well-being was prioritized throughout filming. I know we all had different experiences, but for me, I raised certain issues that were happening during filming and after filming as well with cast members. One was illicit drug use during filming that I was concerned about. I brought that up to my associate producer and my producer and nobody did anything about it. And I can say that with 100% confidence. And then another issue was that myself and another cast member from our season reported concerning behavior that we saw in another cast member in the way that he was treating his partner at the time. From what I understand in terms of what kinetic content PR told me is that that concern was escalated. However, what I heard from um, cast members after the fact is that their resolution was putting that cast member I reported and his partner in a room together to talk it out. Like it is yeah. just like absurd. Um, Why would yeah. you do that? So yeah. we could raise things and they're not handled appropriately. Um, right. And that has been my experience. And I just want to share that. I've been very nervous to share that. However, I, I just can't like stay silent just reading this article because again, we don't know her and we don't know what's going on, but my heart really breaks knowing that she's up against a giant company like Kinetic Content and a company that really does have a lot of power in the entertainment space and the reality TV space when it comes to press and also having the backing of Netflix. Mm -hmm. And what really hurts me and what really needs to change with kinetic content is Netflix is as allegations have popped up like this one, like the sleep deprivation allegations, no one has ever checked in on us. No one yeah. has ever said, is this what actually happened? Was this your experience? I think how they respond with is we're cutting you off. Like you're no longer invited to any events. Like you're no longer going to have any opportunities instead of really doing that check-in. It's like they, and that's not right. That is just yeah. like not right. And that's, I don't know, that's all I have to say about it. No, I, I agree with you. I feel like there's, I mean, apart from all the other allegations that have been, um, you know, vocalized after and now this too, it feels like there's obviously something happening behind the scenes um, of how there is. Like, obviously right and so it's all it's not gonna just go away but based on just like doing articles or getting ahead of the narrative and you know just saying these blanket statements oh we would never allow that to happen well here's the thing we are participants and cast members have spoken out about things like this happening so what are you going to do about it that's my question what are you going to do about it and yeah. you know just like saying oh we would never allow it is not a sufficient answer I agree. So, um, man. But anyways, oh gosh, I feel like that was really heavy and it's hard to like start a recap. I know that was very heavy, man. Huh, there's a lot going on. I feel like in this, also this entire season has just been very wild. I wish they kind of just scratched it because between all of the allegations and like the couple's being followed but not aired there's just so much going on i feel like and yeah. it's like it's not a good look yeah and i think everything we just said about the way like kinetic content and netflix responds to these allegations i'm sure that they can't do much like i'm sure they can't you know come out and say like oh, you know, like, this is true. Obviously, they're going to defend themselves. But I do think the lack of regard they have for participants not checking in on us is, like, not okay, um, especially Netflix. Like, because at the end of the day, like, their name is attached to the show. Okay, guys, that uh, was tough. But let's get into our recap of Episode 8. Nat, I think we should start with the Uche, Lydia, Milton drama fight whatever is going on there's a lot going on with them i mean was milton even a part of that i feel like he was just like whatever <laughs> i 
to be honest, I love Milton. We'll get into it, but okay, you're right. Let's start with Uche and Lydia's blow up. How, what were your oh thoughts? Oh my gosh. So I have an unpopular opinion. I do think that Uche's anger is justified. Mm. Like, Interesting. So, because Aaliyah was the one that told him in the previous sets of episodes that Lydia followed him into the pot. That is what Aaliyah said. Yes. So he's going off of that. He's going off of that information. Also, when Aaliyah tells him in that phone call, that infamous phone call that they have in the pods, you know, when she left mm-hmm. the pods, she goes, she talks about Lydia, about how she got overwhelmed by Lydia, and that's why she left. And yes. so I think in his mind, it's all Lydia's fault. But also, now I do think that obviously Aaliyah planted the seed, but don't, but like Uche is not dumb. Like he's not going to just go blanketly based on what Aaliyah is saying to him. Cause I remember seeing something where he's like, I know for a fact that she came in here because of me. And he like said the same thing to Milton. So he's like very sure. I don't know why he's so sure. Like I would love to see why, like what evidence he has that Lydia followed him into Love is Blind. Well, he says that he goes, oh, well, she made a comment on the first day to a couple of the women. Again, he got this information from Aaliyah. He mm-hmm. says, she goes, I feel like I'm going to meet someone from my past. Yeah. Again, that's what Aaliyah told him. But if you go back to the previous episodes, Aaliyah says for sure to Uche, Lydia came to the pods for you. Yeah. That's what they say in that um, lunch scene that they have together, meeting in person for the first time. So I feel like I understand why he's so angry at Lydia. Yeah. Yeah. I bet if he like sat and really thought about it and got more facts, maybe he wouldn't be so like pointed in the way he thinks. Mm -hmm. But I think Uche is someone who can't really take accountability for (laughs) the things that he does. And so he's just going off of, you know, what Aaliyah said again, Lydia followed you into the pods and also she overwhelmed me. And that's why I left early. You know, in the previous episodes, when we've been recapping, I have been pretty like supportive of Uche like I'm like I understand him that's just the tone of his voice it's fine whatever but after watching the first 15 minutes of this episode episode 8 I I don't know I'm really I'm not judging Uche but the way he handled it I don't think was appropriate Um, I agree yeah right like first of all I think that when he first started talking to Milton I was like, okay, let's see what he has to say. But the way Lydia just came in and was like, you're not talking to him and like pulled Milton out of there was so disrespectful to Milton. Don't you think? Like you think Lydia was disrespectful to Milton? 100%. If yeah, that's not respectful to your partner. If your partner is having a conversation with somebody, you don't go in there and say, Milton, I need you to like, come with me now. Like Milton, Milton, like the way she talked to him was just like, he's not a child. I mean, I know there's an age gap, but he's not a child. Like, no, she definitely has controlling tendencies. Like we saw that in Mexico too, when she's asking him or really telling him to wear a certain color shirt and he's like no um (laughs) yeah so she definitely has shown that she can be controlling especially um when it comes to like her being really high on and on on emotions yeah i don't like how she pointed her fingers in milton's face i don't know if you saw that yeah Mm -hmm. but she goes milton milton and i was like what don't Like 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 you're child. not his mother. I mean, exactly. <laughs> you might have to be, but I was like, you're not, don't treat him like that. It wasn't like, I don't know. It rubbed me the wrong way because I know that there have been instances with past partners for me where they've kind of like gotten in my face and it's really, I don't know. Uh, it's like really intimidating. It's like mm-hmm. not good to like feel that way. Like feel like you're being like chastised by your partner. Yeah, no, I agree. I think Milton handled it very well to be honest but even his conversation with Uche I loved what Milton had to say remember when he said something about the uh the calculus (laughs) oh my god yeah he's like I'm on the z plane Lydia's on the y plane you're on the x plane -plane. I was like 
okay. I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm rand, I randomly am following you. Like yes. you are very much making sense. Okay. Also, I feel like I need merch immediately that says your perception is your reality. That is my favorite thing in the entire world because absolutely Milton, you nailed it. Like your perception is your reality fucking love him anyways i want to kind of get into uche and how he spoke to the rest of the cast after um lydia took milton away i thought that was like really i am not on uche's side like how did you feel about that i don't like the way he talked to miriam i'm on nobody's side i guess what i'm trying to say is i understand where Uche's anger is coming from, like the anger and the blame he places on Lydia, because I think a lot of it has to do with what Aaliyah has told him. However, I really hate the way he talks to people. Um, yeah, agreed. It is. I keep saying this. It is very condescending and it's not okay, but I do feel the same about Lydia as well. She's so explosive and it's like, take a breath, like say what you need to say. Also the same as Miriam. I don't know why she went off. Like, I understand she was trying to defend Lydia, uh, but it just, it felt like she was just doing, just doing too much as well. I don't know. Okay. So for me, I took it in a different way because I think, um, again, like you mentioned earlier, emotions are so high and obviously it's hard to be the perfect version of yourself when you're like so emotional and so much is happening around you. You have to like process it in the moment. Right. But I think what set her off is Uche being rude to her because he almost treated her as if she's like, not good enough to be speaking because she left the experiment early or didn't get engaged. So he's like, oh, I don't need to hear from you. Uh, Stacy. I want to hear from you, like your experience. It's like, don't diminish her as a person just because she didn't make it as far as you did on the show. That's what yeah. it kind of felt like. And I think that's what kind of set her off. But I just, I think like Uche getting defensive and saying that is like, like you said, petty, it's rude and just like, not nice thing to do um i didn't i didn't take it that way uh, that like he was just diminishing her dismissing her opinion because she left early i think it's because she was trying to talk over stacy and he just wanted to hear stacy's point but you're right the way that he responded to her was very rude but i also feel like he felt like the women at the barbecue were like gaslighting him and like kind of ganging up on him because uh, Stacy mentions how Lydia was such a good friend to Leah, how Lydia comforted Aaliyah when Uche was questioning Aaliyah about her cheating. Yeah. But I think what we thought at the time when we saw that scene with Lydia comforting Aaliyah is we thought it was calculative and manipulative because yeah. Lydia hadn't revealed to Leah yet that she had dated Uche in the past. And she was talking about how like, he doesn't deserve you. Like, you know, making all these comments about him when she kind of had this secret. Yeah. And so um, I kind of like, Understood. I kind of see a side, but I don't think the way any of these people communicate is right. Like they are mm -hmm. just such a crazy, it, it's tough because it's not the way I communicate. So when I see like all these emotions, go up and it's just like everywhere i just can't understand it like in my eyes yeah. i'm like all of you guys are being like very petty and you need to like reel it in and take a breath and not like scream at each other because that goes nowhere like with Miriam, i'm like why are you just like screaming at him like yeah i i understand like the anger but jesus christ like take a breath yeah i think it's um it's because they're leading with ego and I think that's yeah. what the biggest like problem is. It's like they're not sitting down and trying to understand where everyone's coming from because you're right. I think the girls did not understand the situation completely of what Uche was trying to say. They didn't know the full story for them to be like, oh, no, actually, like, like there was just supporting Lydia blindly in a way because they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And Uche was trying to explain that. Um, I don't like that Uche was trying to convince Milton out of his relationship with Lydia. That's what it felt like he was trying to do. I thought that yeah. was a little bit inappropriate. And I don't like he was like, 
he was acting like he was looking out for Milton as a friend. Please, you're not Milton's friend. He's never been yeah. Milton's friend from the beginning. Like, yeah, I mean, from what we saw in the edit, maybe they're closer than what it seemed, just like how they downplayed some friendships on our season. But <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just like Izzy uses that excuse too with Chris, right? Like, I'm just looking out for you because you're my friend. It's an excuse. It just feels kind of, it just feels kind of gross. I was like, you could do it. I feel like off camera, but you can do it in a way where you're not, I don't know. It just feels like they're just trying. It's, it's less of like, I'm telling you because you're my friend and more. So like, I want to shit on this other person, like yeah. your partner. Yeah. That's what it's coming off across. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing while you say this because I just thought it was so funny that Uche thought he was going to make such a big impact with what he was saying to, to Milton, but Milton was just like, yeah. I mean, our relationship is a little different. Your perception is yours. My perception is mine. And Lydia's is like, yeah. I was just dying at that. And and then like Uche was just like, well, shit, like, I guess I can't do anything about it. And he's like, well, good luck. Um, I know. Like, Don't let this stray away from us being friends. And Milton's like, well, see you. I'll talk to you in the group chat, bro. Yeah. I, know. So I know. Like, I was just I do dying. <laughs> I do like how chill Milton is like nothing really phases him. But I also think that that can be a little bit unhealthy too. like to have that mindset. You kind of see it in um, later in these episodes where I don't know, he he always he thinks like I feel like he thinks that like not caring or being too chill is always like the right way. And it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think it's 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 definitely situational. Um, but I do commend him on being able to control his emotions. I don't know whether he like takes that back and processes it like on his own time or he really just doesn't give a fuck. And he's like, well, it is what it is kind of thing. Uh, but you're right. It, I think it is very situational. And but I do commend him on on like just not adding to the chaos because there's already so much going on. Yeah, if he would have also gotten emotional and like, you know, over the top. I just I don't know if I could have handled it. <laughs> Can I point out one thing before we move on from them? Um, I kind of chuckled a little bit when um, Uche was mocking Miriam when he goes, I worked in Saudi Arabia. I wasn't working in Saudi Arabia. Oof. I have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. Because if you remember, she is from the pods in the beginning where, you know, she, like her story or her background didn't really make sense. Like she goes, I'm a scientist, but I also have a skincare company, like all this stuff. And so... I know that she came out with a TikTok saying that that was edited, but I think the way he mocked her is very clear that it was as confusing as at the time. On. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it wasn't, it probably wasn't as edited as she's saying on social media. What Uche says to her kind of like confirms that. Yeah, because you know what? You're totally right. Because as viewers, it feels like, oh, Uche just watched it too. And he sees how that's confusing. But actually, in reality, it's happening in real time. So like, yeah, Uche like obviously he's living has it. never, yeah, he's living it. So he's never seen that footage. So it's really yeah. funny that he said that. Um, but I mean, it was below the belt a little bit. But it was. I understand. I understand why he would pull it out as a card to yeah. use. <laughs> Yeah. This cat is right. messy, can, man. Can we talk about that other fight at that party, which was between Johnny, Izzy, Stacy? Like, what did you think about that conversation Stacy and Johnny had? Oh my gosh, I have so many thoughts. And I'm gonna be careful with how I word this, but I that scene made me so angry, Natalie. Like I was so angry watching it because I just felt like the way Stacy was talking to Johnny was so inappropriate. And here's my take on it. I feel like Stacy was projecting onto Johnny and assuming Johnny's behaviors, if that makes sense. So when she goes into Stacy's like, oh, well, if I told you that I was talking to Izzy in the pods, I feel like you would have changed. Your situation would have changed with Izzy. And I feel like that's a projection because Stacy was the one because Johnny called her out for this and said, Stacy, actually, you were the one that was changing based on your conversation with me about Izzy, you know? Mm. And so for me, it felt like a projection. And then also when Johnny was like, why do you think like when Johnny was asking Stacy, 
okay, well, um, I feel like you are being deceitful for this reason. Stacy didn't have like a comeback. She kind of just went below the belt and just started saying, oh, you're a shit person. Like, it's just like not constructive, like, in, like the insults, like it just didn't make sense. Like she's just getting defensive. I don't know. I, what did you think? I just have so many thoughts. <laughs> So I've been in Stacy's shoes, right? Like it's mm. Shayna and I were best friends in the pods. And th I think the only difference is I didn't know what Shayna was saying behind my back until the show came out. Um, obviously the, our season doesn't show that Shayna and I were best friends in the pods. And when I say best friends, I say that in quotations. <laughs> um, I don't think a lot of friendships, like, I don't think you could get really that close in, in the 10 days in the pods, but I digress. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I understand Stacy's anger at Johnny, if, especially because Johnny was making little quips, you know, about Stacy and Izzy. We saw that in the beginning episodes. However, I don't think the way Stacy went off and the way Izzy went off at the party justifies those small quips that Johnny made. Not at all. I'm sorry, but that's just bullying. Yeah. Like my here's a, Here's my issue with Stacy is I she comes off as if she thinks she is high and mighty. Mm -hmm. And it just you could just see that in the way she talks. Um, she's really opinionated in the worst way where she can't let people fucking talk. You see that in the way she also talks to Izzy. And also like uh, when Uche was talking and explaining his situation uh, to the group and Johnny made a face to be like, cause she was shocked by like what Uche was saying. And Stacy had to call her out and be like, is your, is something up with your face or is your face? Okay. Or she said something. And I'm like, why are you being yeah. condescending? And like, it was just blatantly just mean. rude. Just mean. Yeah. She's just mean. I, I, I it's it, so crazy because I thought in the beginning episodes, like Stacy would be this like mature person. And yes, in these current episodes, she's kind of show that she is not very emotionally mature yeah. and also just not mature in general. And the way she thinks about relationships, the way she communicates, the way she handles conflict, like her and Izzy, it was the way they really gained up on Johnny really made my blood boil. It's like me too. I was and so, I'm so angry. Glad, I'm so glad that Johnny like, kind of fought back and went a little bit like sassy back because I was like, you know what? Good for you. Like, yeah, don't honestly let these people, like walk all over you. Yeah. And it's, I think it's hard because Chris is like not very confrontational. It seems like, so he didn't really yeah. say much, but he did. I mean, he did come to her defense, but you're right. Like just watching how Izzy and Stacy even talked about the situation after the fact was also kind of disgusting. And I don't know why this entire situation made me so, so angry watching. Cause I was just like, Johnny didn't do anything that bad to warrant that type of behavior towards her. It just, yeah. uh, just, Oh, it just left me so uneasy and easy to say oh the way you were railing into her turned me on like are you joking to what to he Stacey. said to Stacey yeah That's after disgusting. her fight with Johnny yeah oh. it I, I just realized I was like you are very that was you're unwell that was not <laughs> a normal statement to make um yeah, yeah. it was sad to see Johnny Johnny's crying. my favorite on the show to be honest I think that um, for someone who is in her position, I think she takes accountability when needed. She doesn't like sh she's admitted like, yeah, like Chris was my number two and I'm trying to make it up for him. Like fucking move on, Izzy. Like she's she's acknowledged it and addressed it. And now like get over it. Yeah. And both Izzy and Stacy said the same thing to her, which was, oh, everyone thinks you're a shit person. It's like, no, no, not everyone does. So stop yeah. fucking saying and speaking for other people. Like, and also if you're going to have a defense, like actually say words that mean something. If, if you really think Johnny did something so horrible, why don't you tell yeah. us what that is instead of just saying you're a shit person, you're a shit person. Like that doesn't give us any context. Yeah, I honestly feel like when people say that, when they say everyone thinks you're this, I feel like that's very manipulative. 100%. It's below the belt yeah. and it's it's to hurt them even further. 
Yeah. Oh man, that just made me angry. I hope they watch that and reflect. Like at the reunion, they better fucking address this and they better come to Johnny with an apology. That's all I have to say. Oh, 100%. Even if Stacy and Izzy stand by their anger, the way they communicated their anger and the way they went after her was wrong, blatantly Agreed. wrong. And so I really hope that they apologize for it. If not, I think it says a lot about the type of people Stacy and Izzy are. Um, Agreed. And I don't think like they can blame like the edit and be like, there's more context. No, the way you spoke to her is not okay. Through yeah. and through. Sorry. Agreed. Um, can we talk about that conversation though, that uh, Stacy and Izzy have after the party? Mm -hmm. I thought that yes. was just so, so weird. When Stacy said she wants Izzy to feel like he's about to lose her every time. Like that is like, not a, a healthy relationship. Not at like, all. No. It's like one thing to, first of all, that kind of conversation, like I didn't think that that's where it was going to lead because whatever. Anyway, it was interesting that poor Izzy actually cried about that situation. I was like, oh my gosh, this like really impacted him because he feels like he's not, um, like he, he feels like he's not like good enough for Stacy. And I think that was kind of heartbreaking, but you're right. Like the way Stacy is demanding him to do things, it's like, she's like, you're a lot of talk and not a lot of action. And I thought that was kind of like, I don't know how much truth there is to it, but what does she want? Like she wants him to come home and cook for her every night. Like, is that what she's kind of demanding? I don't even know. Like she wants to be shown more, but like, isn't that what the flowers represent? Like, Hey, this is something that I do every week for you. Like I bring you flowers. Like, it's just like the thoughtful gesture. I, I don't know. I don't know how to like what to make of it. I don't, you're right though. It does feel like Stacey thinks that Izzy's not good enough. Yeah. I don't fault her for wanting, you know, like the dinner and um, him to make more of an effort, but I think what's going to hurt Stacy is she counts like the materialistic things as important. Mm -hmm. um, but she doesn't look at like things that you can't like measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is like the love and support that someone can provide you. Because I think she's like, I do all these things, but I'm like, you're faltering in the way you support Izzy and the way yeah. you talk to Izzy and the way you make him feel supported and loved. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's just, I guess, I think that's where kind of like the, the disconnect is. Yeah. They need to talk about what their love languages are. And I don't know for Stacey, I guess maybe it is like acts of service, but for Izzy, it might be something different. It's like words of affirmation, like the way he loves. I don't know. You're right though. They need to like communicate that better which i guess that's good that they had the conversation but it was very it was interesting but i didn't like how she was like i've given i've given and she thinks that like cooking food and like cleaning is her twice. giving which i i do agree is like part of yeah cooking dinner twice is like twice. i was like there's like way more than that you can't like compare each other in terms of like what you give to the relationship based on just cooking dinner and cleaning. Maybe there's more to that, but that's what it, it made it seem like where she doesn't take other things into account. Yeah. Um, I loved how sweet Izzy's mom is. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely love she's her. She's like, I love those types of parents that come on the show because it reminds me of my parents where, or mostly my dad, where they try to be as understanding as possible, especially yes. knowing their kid is under so much stress. Like I know you don't really see the stress during filming, but it is very chaotic. Um, yes. She reminded me so much of my own mom too. I was just like, when she said that she wanted, um, she was thinking about Stacy and her like well-being too. I was like, that's very much my yes. mom. Like she thinks about everyone involved, you know, it was so cute. Yeah, no, I, I loved the way she framed that as well. I thought it was really funny though when Izzy says Stacy loves him unconditionally. I'm like, are you sure about that, my little Izzy? <laughs> you sure about that? I don't that, think bro? it's unconditional. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of conditions. There's some conditions. You need to <laughs> get rid of those paper plates immediately. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, mm, I don't know more. if it's unconditional. But you know what? I, I don't think that love is unconditional when it comes to a marriage. No, I'm, I agree. I'm, that might be an unpopular opinion. I think when it comes to, you know, like my family, it's more unconditional. Um, yeah. But I think when it comes to a partner, I was like, yeah, conditions have to be in place. There are certain things that I need from my partner. 
if I'm not getting it, that love is going to probably fade. <laughs> Especially in our, in our generation when it's so easy to leave and find something better is what people think, you know, it's yeah, man, I don't know how to feel about these two. Like, how did you feel about how they made up like in the Pilates scene when Stacy's uh, teaching the class and he comes with presents? <laughs> I wonder if she's cashed in for that certificate yet of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I thought it was cute. He's obviously making a, an effort. Like I go like up and down with this couple where sometimes I feel like they're going to make it and then they don't. I think the ending scene that they had in episode nine makes me feel like they're not going to make it, but they definitely have cute moments like him coming to apologize. What I didn't like is she didn't acknowledge her actions and the way she spoke to him. Agreed. Okay. Yes. Yeah, during that, yes. that apology when he came to her Pilates studio, yes. I think it kind of says a lot about, again, me talking about the fact that she thinks she's high and mighty. I think this is kind of like a sign of that. She thinks no. she could really do no wrong. It's interesting because I've been watching like her mannerisms and the way she's interacting with Izzy a little bit. And again, I might be like overanalyzing it or looking too much into the situation. But this is an observation I made is even when they were um, on that date where they went up in the air on the flight and then they had dinner after when they were dancing even. I don't know. It just felt like Izzy was very like loving, but her, she was kind of like, I don't know. I don't think she's as into it as she lets on. Like her facial expressions and her mannerisms and the way she's like laughing at, in romantic situations. I feel like she's not as into it as she like lets on. That's just my vibe. But who knows? Yeah, maybe. Again, it's hard to judge hard. off like mannerisms because I was like editing plays a part. And so, and also 100%. people are kind of like awkward in front of the cameras. I mean, you know, like in those scenes, there's probably like six cameras and like three producers. And so I don't know if that like also plays a role in why she might seem very stiff. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of confuses me is when she goes, I'm sorry, I made you mad. She'll like use this baby voice. And I'm like, I mean, that's yeah, what but I do mean. you know, like why you made him mad? Or she goes, I'm sorry, you were sad. And I was like, what? but do you know, like. The role you played that's in what him I mean. feeling that way, Nat. That's what I exactly. That's exactly what I mean by like she like uses it as a deflective method to just be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like you know what I mean? Because she feels bad, but she doesn't feel bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I feel like that's something a baby voice to make it better. You know, I feel like that's what I used to do in the past when I was like, I don't feel like I should apologize, but I'm just going to apologize for how you're feeling. One thing about Izzy, though, before we move on to Lydia Milton, him not being forthcoming about why he doesn't have credit cards. That is a huge, huge red flag. That's it's like blinking red flag. It's so bad. First of all, so I bad. love that the I love that the editors like kind of plugged it in the pods when Johnny's like, well, what about his bad credit? Like something with finances. And then they looped it back into the biggest fight ever between Stacy yeah. and I was so confused when they were being so standoffish with each other when they're packing. I was like, what is going on? Like, why are they so angry? But for him to omit that he doesn't have credit cards or the reason for why he doesn't have credit cards was kind of wild to me. I think it's actually a huge deal. And I think Stacy is in the in the right to be very wary about Izzy because of that. Keeping secrets about finances is not okay. Um, I agree. Like, I'm going to be real. Shane did that to me in the pods. Like, it never played on TV because I didn't want to embarrass him in front of the cameras and finances was like a sensitive subject for him. And I didn't want him like blowing up in front of the cameras at me. Yeah. Um, but he did keep things from me and and did lie about like salary and things like that. And then after, after, after filming is when I found out the truth, like the full truth. Oof. And it was like, it, I mean, it's a real concern. Cause I'm like, if you're going to lie to me about it now, like what if we do have financial issues in the future? Like, are you going to hide them from me or lie to them about me? Because like finances is what, like the number one reason for divorce mm -hmm. in the U S yeah. or like one of the top one of the reasons. Top. And so, Mm -hmm. It just, I feel like it's, it says a lot about a person when they lie about finances, especially when they're lying about it to their partners. Like, I feel yeah. like that's one thing you've got to be on the same page about going into a marriage. 
Yeah, you have to be extremely forthcoming. And clearly he's insecure about his financial state, which is wild because of all of the conversations that he had with Stacy's dad and like how clearly, you know, love sometimes wants to fly first class. <laughs> like, is he, you're not able to provide like Stacy, you know, with the financial stability that she might be looking for. And I think that this is going to be the reason why Stacy says no at the altar. It She probably is not going to blame the fact that he has bad credit. And that's why she's saying no, she's going to. And rightfully so, it's going to be because Izzy omitted and which is a form of lying about. Yeah, finances. I think that's going to be the reason why. And it's interesting yeah. because Johnny clearly talked to Izzy about finances in the pods. Why did Stacey not? Say, right? Like, yeah. He says, like, I didn't, I want to have, like, a big conversation, like, in person about it. But he told Johnny about it. I wonder if he knew in the pods or could sense from Stacy like, she was very, like, money-focused or money-oriented. And so mm -hmm. that's why. But it is still very manipulative that he kept it from her. And you're right. It is a form of lying. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so it just – a lot of red flags going off just with that, with that scene. And um, I think – what these ending scenes, especially the one with Milton and Lydia, we'll talk about that later. What these like ending scenes with the couples in episode nine shows is that the pods don't really work. <laughs> I think couples who get married, it's not lucky, blind. but yeah, like you really got to like spend time with people and be with them in person like stacy would would have never asked about the credit cards if they weren't at the gas station like she references some point they're at a gas station and that's when she asked along with milton and lydia like he would have she would have never known that milton was messy if they hadn't lived together and so i think what it shows is like the pods just can only go so far and yeah. time really does matter like time of getting to know someone matters yeah. And, and also like the pods really do allow you to be, like show the type of person you want to be. And maybe sometimes you are that person, but in the later part of the experiment, your actions and how, your mannerisms and how you, you know, behave really show the type of person you actually are, as opposed to the person that you described you were in the pods, you know, cause those are all just words. Yes. You see that with Lydia and Milton, where Lydia says, Milton, you told me you were clean or organized yes. in, in the pods. And he clearly yes. is not that, according to Lydia. So, um, yeah, it just says that you could, like, talk a lot of games, say a lot of shit in the pods, you know, and it, it may not mirror who you actually are in your everyday life. Yeah. Which is, I know, I honestly, I feel like it's just being human, whatever. But I, can we get into the whole fight with Milton and Lydia? Because I thought they were going to have such a lovely, like, evening with the rocks. It was so cute. And all of a sudden, they get into it. Uh, they get into it. But weirdly, I, uh, I really commend Lydia in this situation because as she says like she can get very emotional and like very loud and um just expressive when she's like feeling like she wants to defend herself but weirdly in this situation she did speak her mind and i felt like she didn't like get over the top i thought she like kept her cool pretty well during this fight did you get the same sense? Like I, cause okay, here's the thing. I feel like people should be allowed to have emotions and process them however they want. Like not everyone is going to behave similar to Milton, how he just keeps his cool yeah. and is able to like stay very like emotionless. That's just not how everyone works. But I thought Lydia did a really good job during this like conversation of like really just explaining her side of things i didn't agree with everything that she was saying but like the way she said it I, I appreciated um i didn't feel that way to be honest like um i i, I do agree that she didn't do the same things that she did in her conversation with uche but that was kind of expected they seem unwilling to compromise mm -hmm. i think that lydia's inability to control her emotions um, is actually an issue 
And the fact yeah. that Milton is kind of asking her like, hey, you need to like control them. But she keeps saying, this is me, this is me. But like having a partner means listening to them on also their needs and also them just trying to make you a better person. But same thing for Milton. Lydia's like, you got to be more clean. You can't leave like your fucking dishes near your bedside for three days. And he kind of like <laughs> disregards like what she is saying to him. I don't know. I feel like both of them are like very unwilling to compromise. Yeah. Okay. So it's interesting. I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to get married. I do too. Just the way the edit's going. Yeah. And also I do, I don't know. Sometimes opposites attract. I like the way Milton is able to control. Like he's just like, I don't know. I just really like Milton a lot. He is my fucking favorite. I think that he's doing such a good job of like talking to Lydia about this situation. And he's like, Hey, just like you were able to tell me, Hey, you're not being clean. You're leaving floors on the ground. All of these things. I'm able to take that. And I'm going to try to be better. This is what I got from it. He's like, uh, he's like understanding that Lydia has an issue with his behavior when it comes to cleanliness, whatever. But, and he made such a good point of telling Lydia, hey, like now that I'm telling you uh, something that is shortcoming in you, which is you not being able to handle your emotion, you're not hearing me out in the same way that I just heard you out. Like, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like she yeah. doesn't get it. Like... I saw it we, differently, 100%. Yeah, I know. Like, you saw it differently, but I that's how was, I saw it. I thought it was like, I thought it was manipulative that he said, oh, you're telling me this, that I need to change about myself. So I'm going to tell you what you need to change about yourself. Like he, it was like a tit for tat. He was almost like saying he didn't acknowledge that he needed to change. Like it was like, oh, you're telling me that I'm messy and I need to do this. Well, you can't control your emotions. Well, he obviously think, didn't say it like that, but yeah. it felt very much like I don't need a change, but there's things I don't like about you either. But I was like, these are two separate issues. Milton's cleanliness has nothing to do with Lydia's inability to control her emotions in times of conflict. Like, yeah, it's too no. separate. I don't like how he did it. Like, I do this. Will you do this? Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I, I didn't get the sense at all that it was like a tit for tat at all. It wasn't like he was like so emotional about it that cause he already, I felt like he's like, yeah, you're right. Like I am not clean. At least my pile of laundry is in the corner. Like he, he didn't, he wasn't like impacted by Lydia. But he was dismissing that. her. He was dismissing her by trying to prove like he wasn't messy and he wasn't taking accountability. Like, yeah, it's fucking disgusting. If you leave a plate by your bedside for three days. And also if we go back to the scene with um, Lydia and his parents and, and she goes, oh, like after he ate, he just left it on the couch. And he's like, I had to go to work. It's like, it takes two seconds to put it in the sink. No, I, I mean, totally clearly he's showing he's like messy. I think that all of those behaviors are things that need to be changed. But I just don't think that, like you said, like Milton, in my opinion, I don't, like you said, I don't think that he cares that Lydia mentioned those things. He's like, yeah, I kind of am that way. But I didn't feel that he was being defensive and was like, well, you do this then. I honestly think that the producers or they were just kind of like, talk about the things that are lacking in your marriage. Like, what are the things that are holding you back from saying yes? Let's talk about the hard things. Like, it's not going to be just like a lovey-dovey date. And I say that because they did that to me and shake too when we were filming because we were just like la di da di da and they were like no why don't you talk about something that's fucking real and you know get into it so i think that's what that scene was intended for but i i was on milton's side the entire time i felt like he <laughs> was just saying hey like it made me really uncomfortable the way that you handled that situation and got so like emotional and it, like over the top I thought it was very healthy of him to say that. Um, also, side note, just to be funny, did you see how when Lydia was talking, this is me, you have to take me as I am. He's just like stuffing his face with the food. No, I know. It was, they were just like, the way they were eating angry. I was like, okay. I was like, wow, you guys are just uh, really trying like, to end this that? dinner right now. So um, funny. Uh, yeah, I, I disagree. I saw it as more of like, she was critiquing him. And so- he kind of used that as a way to critique her and he didn't take accountability for the fact that he needed to change. I don't know. That's how I took that scene. And so I just don't think that uh, you can't 
go into like a marriage like that, I feel like you have to be open to compromise, especially if you have different needs. Um, like, no, I don't think any two people are perfect. Like no one's a perfect no. fit, but like people are, are able to like be in relationships because they have to make certain changes, yeah. um, reasonable changes. Um, and one of it is like being a more cleanly person. Like sometimes you just have to do it. And I don't like that Milton didn't say like he was going to change. That yeah. was my and thing. You, and you know what? I think um, weirdly, I think both of them are kind of good for each other though. Like I feel like Milton is so even keel with his emotions that maybe he'll help Lydia achieve that level of just like not giving a fuck or being able to express herself differently a little bit, but still maintaining the integrity of being her. Um, and then with Lydia, I feel like Lydia will help Milton be, you know, his mother and clean a little bit. <laughs> that's what that's my but, issue with them and i was like but, i feel like lydia is going to be the mom and but also lydia is going to be controlling and almost like her emotions will always override milton's opinions it's interesting though because the conversation that lydia has with milton's family she paints like how their relationship is kind of like perfect in a weird way i know and i loved it when milton's mom called her out and was like well your answers are very scripted and i'm like She's yes scripted. they are so scripted oh yeah 100 so percent. but i don't blame lydia for saying those things i mean i it's <laughs> Me it's neither, like when but... you you know like when you walk into that environment and like everything's a little bit tense like you know like milton's family isn't the most like outwardly loving you know i'm sure compared to like lydia's family and so yeah. um i think she went in the mindset like i need to convince them and it came off very scripted because i'm sure they know like hey not everything is that like perfect and great right like yeah i'm sure it, it seems like very much of an act but i don't blame her for having those answers because i'm sure she's like i need to convince them i mean yeah like zhuzhing it up a little bit <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean his sister like i think says right off the bat like is this real like this seems very like how do you know if i went something like that it'd be like okay now i have to like convince these people like we are mm. ready yeah i think um lydia is is very intelligent so she's obviously trying to not trying to she's just like hey like i'm gonna put my best foot forward but yeah. she did not convince his sister whatsoever Milton's sister you oh. can tell by her facial expressions even the one-on-one -on -one time that she had with milton she was not bought in whatsoever because i think it comes off that his family is a lot more practical than they are emotional they lead with their head and make like decisions based on like strategically what makes sense yeah. rather than emotion his mom says such his mom i think says like marriage is like a business transaction mm. um like you need to make sure it's like i guess like mutually yeah. beneficial i didn't really know what she meant by that but i was like huh interesting mm. statement yeah it seems yeah. like they're they're all like milton like very like logical uh, yeah type of people and they take the emotion out of it yeah, but I thought it was so cute when Milton was talking to his sister um, at that lunch date and he was like, no, that's why I like Lydia so much and her family is because we're not like that emotional, overly loving type of like family and they're very mm -hmm. like giving and like, I think like he likes that side of himself that it's being brought out by Lydia. So that's why I like, yeah. like them. I feel like they're kind of like they bring out good things in each other. And I think it would be good for them. I don't know. I, I'm excited to see and hear like at the reunion, if they get married, like what their relationship has been like. Yeah. What are your predictions for these couples? Oh, I mean, you mean the two that are not going <laughs> so smoothly? <laughs> It's ridiculous. Like, I wish they followed more of the couples because, and hopefully they'll yeah. do that in the future for this reason because you never know oh, I'm what sure, happens. Like, I'm sure producers are like kicking themselves, being like, okay, we had, well, I know that Renee and Carter get cut completely, and obviously a Tram and Thomas also get cut. And it seems like they were actually supposed to have full storylines on this season. I'm sure they're kicking themselves for sending those three couples who got engaged that producers sent home. They're probably like, yeah. we should have had them on <laughs> the show than the couples we have now. Literally. Um, my predictions, though, I definitely think that um, Lydia gets married. Lydia and Milton. 
I feel like they will get married and that is about it. No one else. <laughs> okay. My predictions are that Lydia and Milton, yeah, they get married. I feel like you could just tell by the edit that they're getting. Um, and then Izzy and Stacy, I feel like she's going to say no. Yeah, obviously. But like, it was interesting because the way they ended their scene was Stacy like hugging him and being like, yeah, it's going to be okay. Did she use the baby voice? <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. she did. She's like, it's fine. It's coming and he goes, okay. and she goes, what are you thinking? And he goes, you need to buy some deodorant. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm like, what? I was like, there's no way this is going to be okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I just think that again, she cares about finances. She cares about money. This is a huge, huge deal. Not only on the money thing, but lying about it. And so no. I, you know what? If she says no, I don't blame her. Yeah. Can I, before we wrap though, can I just ask you one quick question? Do you think that if Izzy chose Johnny, that their relationship would have been better? Just a random question. I think about that sometimes. Mm. No, because I feel like Johnny just deserves better through and through. And I think that Izzy could have just never given her what she needs. And I'm just specifically thinking about his credit score. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I thought that it was kind of the fact that um, Johnny knew about the credit thing and was still like wanting to give him a chance, I think speaks some volume of who she is as a person. Um, yeah, that, I think that I she know. just kind of be with someone who handles conflict the way Izzy does. I think he kind yeah. of shows that he's like very petty. And um, I think like, you know, uh, it just it wouldn't have worked out. Well, anyways, there is only two couples. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't believe that that's what's happened with season five. It's been such a crazy journey, I feel like, so far. Um, yeah. We're, there's only one episode left, and I'm intrigued to see how they're going to fill the entire episode with just two weddings. <laughs> like, maybe a lot happens. I know. Well, they've already filled two episodes with two couples, and uh, so I'm sure they could do it. But yeah. I'm excited to see who ends up together or Me if too. none of them end up together. So which is very likely, but um, let us know what you guys thought of the episode so far. Um, just leave your comments and your questions at our Instagram page at out of the pods and make sure you leave a review and subscribe. See you next Wednesday. Bye.